In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up for an arterial line. We're going to start with what kit you'll need, then we're going to have a look at what the nurse would be expected to do, and then we will be discussing some hints and tips towards the end. So this is the kit that you'll need. You're going to need a drip stand, you're going to need a 500ml bag of heparinized saline or normal saline, one single pressure giving set, one transducer fixer to go onto your drip set, one transducer cable, one 500ml pressure bag, and then a pre-packed arterial set. If your trust doesn't use pre-packed arterial sets, the things that you'll need from it are one syringe that's 2.5ml, one syringe that's 5ml, one green needle, a couple of swabs, one arterial dressing, one chloroprep, and one drape. After that, you can either use an Inflatron or a quick flow, which is your actual arterial catheter that's going to go in. The arterial set and one of the catheter devices you can put on a trolley and give to your doctor because they're going to put the catheter in and the rest of this kit is what we're going to look at next and how we're going to set it up. So the nurse's role in setting up the arterial line after you've got your kit ready is to prime the line itself and make sure the transducer cables are ready. So the first thing that I will start with is um, making sure my transducer cables are on my drip stand. So my uh, holster and then my cables themselves. They just have really simple little twist locks at the back. What I then do with all my lines is I just hook them onto one of my drip hooks because they're out of the way. Key thing to remember with your transducer kit set is that it needs to be at heart level. So look at what height your patient's at. If they're on a trolley, are they sat up slightly, are they laid down, and also the height of it dependent on how your patient's positioned. The next thing that I will do is open my um, saline. and hook that out of the way for a second. After that, I want my pressure giving set. Remember, it's an ANTT technique, so you need to have your gloves on and be clean while you're doing it. Your line looks like this when you open it, everything's sort of hooked together nicely. Um, obviously, this is to punch your bag with, and this is to go in your transducer cable. I wanna make sure that my roller clamp is rolled down and I just want to check that all my other locks are in place. So just work your way down the line, making sure that everything is fastened together nice and tightly. If not, it's liable to uh, drop on the floor. The other thing that I want to do is just make sure that all of my um, T-clamps are twisted in the right direction. Then I'm going to take my bag, undo it, remove my Topper and pierce the back. Hook that back up and start to part fill my drip chamber. So it's about halfway. What I'm going to do next is pressurise my um, fluid bag. So I take my 500ml bag, pop it off, has a little handy hook on the inside and hook that one on instead. And using the squeezy end, I'm gonna put some pressure into my bag. I want to pressure it till this bit goes green. Okay, so I've got enough pressure in my bag now and I'll just lock that off. Next thing that I want to do is prime the line. So what I'm gonna do is undo it all so that you can see it. So starting from the top, I'm gonna to roll unroll my uh, hinge clamp slightly. You'll notice that it'll only, f only prime the line so far down. The next thing that you need to do is here on your line is just like a little, like a flush gauge. If you find yourself a cup to let it run into and then squeeze the flush gauge, you'll see that it will let the rest of the heparinized saline run through your line and you wanna keep it squeezed until you've got no bubbles coming out the end. So you've got a constant flow. That is your line primed there. There's no air in it when I look through it. Everything's connected right. I'm happy that that's a safe line. What I want to do now is actually clip it into my transducer cable. This end has got a clip on it. What I want to do is remove that. So if I squeeze these two sides together, it lets me take it off. Let's just get rid of that. 
The next thing that I want to do is put it into my transducer set. So if you try and put it in the wrong way, it just doesn't fit. Actually goes in upside down. Turn it round, slide it in and it should click. What you need to remember often when we look at IV lines and giving sets and things like that, the line that's coming down is the one that's going to our patient. On an arterial line, it doesn't. This line is going back up to the bag and it's this line that comes out and goes to the patient. So you're ready to zero your line and set the transducer cables up. Obviously, at this point you need to put this down to be able to touch your transducer cables. So normally, if you just pop it back in the packet, the packet was clean. And then what you want to do is make note of which side of the transducer cable you've put it in. So you'll see under here, this has got one black stripe on it, that's line one. And this has got two black stripes on it, that's line two. On your cables, you also have line one and line two. So we're gonna plug in line one. Then we're gonna have a look at our arterial line again. So you'll notice you've got two T-twisters on it. The one at the end of your line, what you need to do is just make sure that it's off to air and change your bung so you want a more robust bung than that one. So take the other bung that's in your pack and pop that one on. You can now pass this bit to your doctor who will have um, put the catheter into the patient. Then with this T connector, what we want to do is get ready to zero the outline. So how we're gonna do that is we want to turn it off to the patient. So off is when it's flat end is up to the patient. This is why it was important to know which lines go into your patient and which line is going to your bag. When we've got it in a position where it's off to the patient, what we want to do is take this bung off. So it's off to the patient, it's open to the air, and we're gonna take the bung, up so, bung off so it's completely open to the air. And we discard that bung. The reason that we open it to the air is because when we're measuring pressures, what we need is a baseline pressure for the machine to take as a reference point. So what we use is air pressure, and um, we will press zero on our machine, um, and then that will register what the air pressure is, and then when we close it off to the air and open it to the patient again, it can register what the arterial pressure is against the air pressure. So on your monitor, change from non-invasive to invasive monitoring. This should give you an outline segment. And then you can zero your outline from there. So press zero, zero to air pressure. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it off to the air, put a new bung on. Ideally, I would have red bungs because that's what my colleagues in um, ICU like the best because when they've got red bungs on, they know that it's an arterial line, but I haven't got red bungs. Put new bung on and then I'm definitely off to air and open to the patient now and I should get a trace on my monitor. Okay, so hints and tips or problem busting. Um, if you can't see a trace on the arterial monitor, sometimes it's because you haven't clicked this in far enough. Um, it can be just sat, look like it's in, but it's actually sat just above it, so it can't monitor properly. So that's usually the first one that I'll check. Have I clicked it in place? The other reason that sometimes we can't see a trace for is because um, we've put our line into line one, but we've actually plugged line two into the machine. So just check that you've got one and one matching or two and two matching. One and two can't read each other. If you lose pressure in your bag, the potential that you've got is that arterial blood's gonna come back into the line. Or if yourself or the doctor takes in arterial gas off the end of the line, you're gonna to want to flush that line back through um, so it doesn't clot off and then you have to put a new catheter in. The way that you do it is just by pushing your flush clamp. So if you just squeeze that, you'll see that it'll flush the line through. So that's how easy it is to set up for an arterial line. It's nothing to be nervous about. You just need to be methodical with your approach. As always, remember to check what kit you've got in your department um, so that you become familiar with it. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.